It seems to me that there are two kinds of problems that uh, comprehensive digital memory uh, poses to us. Uh, the, the first one I'd like to label power problems or power challenges. Uh, it usually has to do with the fact that when we share information with somebody else, that person has some informational power over us uh, that that person can use in order to um, sell us some stuff, uh, to market us some stuff. Um, and uh, that information can be aggregated, can be shared with others, so that a certain um, information profile uh, can uh, arise about us. Um, this is what has been the focal point of information privacy research for a very long period of time. But I believe this kind of dyadic relationship, if you want, between uh, a person, that, a data subject that gives information and a processor that receives information is only part of the picture. Uh, we need to go beyond uh, this uh, relatively uh, small scale uh, view, particularly uh, when we look at the importance of memory. Um, let me give you an example. Uh, for a very long period of time, we thought that um, sharing stuff on the internet is somewhat dangerous because it's not just our friends that have access to it, but it's everybody around the world that has access to it. Hundreds of millions of people and thousands of jurisdictions, and somebody somewhere might actually be offended by what we had to say uh, and m might uh, get a court to agree and then uh, we find ourselves having to defend our actions, much like the Google uh, managers had to do a few weeks back when they were uh, successfully sued and convicted in an Italian court for what they did or didn't do on YouTube. Um, and, and so that's been around, that view has been around for a couple of years. Uh, it's called uh, the panopticum. Um, the panopticum basically is an idea that has been uh, with us for a hundred and some years, uh, invented by Jeremy Bentham in Britain. The idea is uh, it would be great to create a prison in which the prisoners don't know when the prison guards watch them. They have to assume that they're always watched and therefore they have to behave all the time. Uh, similarly, because we don't know who is watching us online, we have to behave all the time uh, to the lowest common denominator uh, and therefore our behavior is skewed, is constrained. Uh, and many people have been writing about that. But I believe there is, with digital memory, something much more problematic coming up. And that has to do with the longevity of digital memory. So we have to face the fact that what we say and do online today will not only be viewed by the hundreds of millions of people that are online today, but might be viewed and interpreted differently by people and institutions 10 years, 20 years, 30 years down the road when we're no longer young uh, and we might not be um, uh, as engaged in public discourse and protest anymore, uh, but we might uh, want to apply for a well-paid investment banker's job uh, and then they might just Google us and find out that uh, 15 years earlier we said something uh, that uh, wasn't so um, complimentary to uh, the banks uh, or so. Uh, so therefore, uh, a comprehensive digital memory creates what I call a temporal panopticum. It creates uh, a situation in which we have to fear that we are not only watched today, but we are watched by future generations, uh, by our future. And that really dramatically constrains what we ought to do online and pushes us toward self-censorship exactly when we don't need self-censorship because we need robust public debate online. That's what the online discourse is all about. Well, let me give you an example of what happens already today. So there's people who lose their jobs, uh, who would, relationships blow up basically uh, because of what they said online earlier on. Uh, but there are also cases that are quite shocking in a way. I had a, a woman call in at one of the radio shows that I did uh, and she told me uh, about her case. Uh, she had been uh, convicted of a crime in the state of California um, many years ago when she was uh, 17 years, served in prison, then was released, uh, started a new life, went to a new place, uh, found a husband, had kids, started a family. Basically everything was, was in order. She even found God. So, uh, hey, this uh, sounds like a happy end story. Except uh, one day uh, a colleague of her son in school Googled her 
and found the website of mugshots of all um, prison inmates in California over the last 20 or 25 years. And, and she was right in there. And suddenly the community, her small community that she lived in, knew that she actually was uh, an ex-convict uh, and immediately ostracized her. Uh, and her new life uh, unraveled. And she called in and said, what can I do? And I said, nothing. Uh, this, is un this is the unfortunate side effect of a digital memory that doesn't forget while our society forgets. We forgive even ex-convicts, uh, but the digital memory doesn't do that anymore. Mm -hmm.